infinity of them. Okay, so so how, how we do it? So so we have this um, interval in in which all the all the all the sequ all the um, elements of, of the sequence lie, and so as the as the first element of, of our constructed constructed sequence i zero we took zero we took a a zero here, and we keep it inside of the sequence. So after each step we done, we will have one more one more element of our constructed subsequence. Yeah? So so let me me write it down. This is important. After each step one element and one following element of subsequence is constructed yeah, so so in this in this setting we we know that our subsequence is growing and growing and since we are going to to infinitely many of steps in in the proof then we will be able to to construct the whole subsequence okay so now, now what what we do is we split this uh, this this uh, interval of alpha, alpha beta into two parts, and we don't really care what we do with the with the middle line, but we can we can keep we can put it into the, the either part. But so and now look at look at the next elements of the of the sequence. Now what what holds is that at least one of these one of these parts contains infinitely many of, of following elements of the sequence. Yeah, so so suppose that in this case this this is alpha, it could be both of them, it, but at least one of them. And we need to realize at least one of them. So what we do, we will throw away all these values which are on top of or in the top part, we are never going to consider them again. But we still have infinitely many many of the things down here. Yeah? So we will remove them from the sequence, we will forget about them completely, and we will continue with, with this part here. Yeah, so, so in the next step we will pick this, this following value, it's uh, our uh, i1, i i1 here, and now we will again split the values in half, now suppose that in the top part there is infinitely many of them, so we will throw away these, these values down here, yeah? and we will pick another another following uh, element in this, in this part, and it will be AI2, and it goes so on and so on. So now the question is why the values are, are why, the, why the subsequence is, is, uh, is converging, because this is a valid const validly constructed subsequence, so it, it is converging because the difference is between the the following following elements of the sequence are getting smaller and smaller. First, they they can be they can be arbitrary and and then uh, alpha beta and then uh, half of this half of this and so on. So differences are getting smaller and smaller. So it has to converge to one specific point somewhere here. Ah, so it's converging, and this is this is the proof of the, of this of this beautiful beautiful uh, theorem or lemma of of Weierstrass. So we are going to to use this uh, this this lemma to prove this this extrema uh, theorem, and how we are going to do this? We are going to basically take a look at the mapping inside of, of A and B, and this maps to some set, and we already know that that this uh, set is actually some interval because the intermediate values are are uh, always found on the continuous function, but we, we take this basically, we take this A and B, let's say this, something like that, and we basically take all the values and they are mapped on some part of the of the real line, and we, we still don't know what, 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 is, what is with these, these extrema points, but um, so, so basically uh, this, this image, let's, let's call it big, big Y. Yeah, so this, so this this thing here. So we know that it's that it's somehow uh, they they call it connected. That, that they are not not uh, that it's at, at most uh, uh, this is exactly exactly one piece in in the, in the, in the uh, on the real line. But now we will consider. Uh, we don't know that uh, these extreme points are belonging to Y or not. So we need to show that this this maximum 
exist for y and this this minimum exists for y and then we are done this is what the statements wants that there exists some global maximum and global minimum of this of this part so so how how can we how can we do this okay so there may be not exist a maximum or minimum I, I will i will just just let me work with the with the maximum till, till the end of the proof and the case of the minimum is, is uh, very similar or exactly the same so so in the case of, of a maximum so uh, what what we consider we don't know that the maximum exists but there exists something called called supremum and supremum is uh, some something very similar to maximum, but it does not have to exist in general. So supremum is something like upper bound of the of the set y. So supremum of of y is some number. Let's uh, call it let's call it s. Yeah, such that for every element of y, this x is more or equal s. So this is something called called upper bound. But uh, this this wouldn't be this wouldn't be any any anything interesting in this in this setting. So so we need we need something more. So also for every for every y such that um, y is uh, such that. Um, So um, yeah, so so for uh, basically that this this upper bound is is the smallest of all possible upper bounds. For f so for every y upper bound of i, this s is smaller or equal y. Yeah, so this is the smallest upper bound of, of all of them. So basically, if, if there is a maximum, then this maximum is a supremum. But if the maximum does not exist, the supremum may still uh, may still exist. Actually, there is a theorem which says that for the, the bounded, from the bounded set from, from above, there is always a supremum for the real numbers. And it's finite, and in all cases, it, it may be infinite supremum, infinitely large. So... Um, but it's it's no not a problem in our case. Okay, so um, yeah, because um, yeah, we we will see we will see actually actually this this in a second. So uh, my my um, our supremum will be always finite. Now it may still be infinite. But um, okay, so so basically basically what what um, what holds that. Um, like for every uh, so if if f is if s is supremum and we consider s minus some epsilon then this epsilon the s minus epsilon always lies in inside of uh, y in our case uh, since since y is y is continuous or it's uh, let's say this s minus uh, y is always below something inside inside of inside of um, yeah, is is below f of some x, uh, below or equal of some x, such that x lies in y. Yeah, but in our case, uh, even even this 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 thing here, if if the epsilon is is small enough, is always lies inside of y. But yeah, so so basically, what we can do, we can uh, take this epsilon smaller and smaller, like like one over n. And we can get a sequence of of um, of uh, basically points which are lying in Y. So basically, we get we get some sequence a one a two two a n. Yeah, in in such a way that f a n is a larger or equal supremum. Uh, minus epsi uh, minus one over n. Yeah, so so this this thing holds that uh, basically um, basically let me let me draw a picture. So so we have we have a f uh, we have this uh, function here. So now we have this supremum, and now for every every epsilon for every distance we allow, there is some point 
about it. Now no, we take the half and again something. Uh, always, always we get something, some sequence of the points which are somehow jumping, jumping closer and closer to the supreme. So the function values are always closer and closer to the supreme. So now what we know is that all these function values are li of these all these a ends lies between a and b. Now it's inside of this integral. So so this is some some bounded sequence of, of a ends. And since the sequence is bounded, then by theorem of the Weierstrass, there exists a subsequence which is, uh, is which is convergent. So now we can we can say that without loss of loss of generality, a n converges to some value, and let's call this value big A. And now the claim is that f of big A is is maximum of, of the function f on the on the interval. Okay? So we just need to we just need to finish this and we will be we will be done. Okay so so what uh, what happens? We, we we just take a look at, at limit of f a n of of this of this uh, sequence and since the function is continuous, then we already know that this is equal f of limit of a n. But this limit of a n is nothing else than f of a. Yeah, so we have a we have a sequence of uh, the function values which is converging to f of a. But now, since uh, the function values are increasing and uh, so uh, they are increasing. Are getting closer and closer to the to the supreme. Okay, so so we know that we know that that a n is larger or equal supreme minus one over n. Yeah. So so this uh, f f of a n. Sorry, f of a n. So so this these function values are increasing and they are bounded bounded from from above by the supreme because nothing can be larger than supremum nothing maps to, to a larger thing than supremum so this thing has to has to converge and the only place where it, where it can converge is the supremum so this value here is s and therefore s is maximum and this is this is proof of the of the intermediate values theorem okay so 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 we see that that uh, continuous function satisfies some very beautiful properties which which no other function satisfy uh, this is this is very useful and we will we will be using this this in in, in a second so so this this uh, this theorem of, of extremas and uh, and intermediate values this, this shows that there is somewhat nice behavior when when we know that the function is continuous Okay, so so let's let's move to the let's move to the derivative part. So um, and derivative is uh, somewhat uh, somewhat uh, and uh, like like when when you have a function, I, I expect like you have already seen derivatives. If if not, then then I could make like probably more detailed course because we don't have like time to to get used to them and how how to compute them. But uh, like let let me just recall. So derivative is is uh, at some point we denote it by f prime of x is tangent of of this of this line which which is uh, like uh, touching touching the function and uh, function in in the best way. So formally, you can you can um, say that f x is limit of um, f x minus f x plus plus h over over h. So uh, I don't know if I, I didn't uh, swap it. Uh, I did. Uh, okay, so let's uh, this. Sorry. F x plus h minus f x as h goes to zero. Uh, so what does it mean? As, as we get closer and closer, we say how much is the value f x plus h different from x f x? Yeah. So as we get closer and closer here, the difference is is uh, somehow says how fast the function is growing because if if this difference is if this difference